Imam Hamid Slimi is uh, one of our neighbors here at Sayyid Khatija Center, a wonderful center uh, just close by. Uh, you know, uh, there's so many things I could say about uh, Imam Hamid Slimi. Uh, you know, he's a, a scholar, a teacher, you know, founder, one of the founders of the Muslim Council of Peel. Uh, but I won't embarrass him further, inshallah. Uh, you'll all be inspired by his talk, so I will uh, turn it over to him, inshallah. And I will give you the five-minute reminder uh, when yeah. it's time. Sheikh Hamad has to leave, unfortunately, and because of the compression of the program, I'm not giving him his full justice, so I will be quiet now and yeah. let him continue. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ma wala. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasalli amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم لا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت السميع العليم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله I have prepared a lecture for one hour and uh, unfortunately I have to skip I must leave at nine o'clock no other uh, compromise there are a lot of non-Muslims waiting to learn about Islam tonight and I have to be there, that is a priority. That is my f main focus, teach our neighbors about the deen and they're waiting. They accommodated changing the time from 8.30 to 9.15, so I have to be there, inshallah. Uh, I was tasked by the organizers to talk about an extremely critical uh, topic which deals with family and treatment of women in Islam. And we, this is family day weekend. Monday is family day in this uh, province. And in Islam, every day is family day. But uh, because people are in the mood to talk about family, and this conference is about stairs to bliss, uh, we know for sure that there is a crisis today. Uh, not because we want to be alarmist, this is the testimony of non-Muslim scholars and, and, and wise people and people who understand how a society is evolving. The concept of family, family values, what makes a family, family, and all of these things. I'm going to skip some of the points I was asked to talk about. Because to be honest, I cannot cover the whole topic in 25 or 30 minutes. Therefore, we first and foremost have to understand there is a problem with us. Does anybody here believe that we don't have problems? The world has problems, we are perfect. Anybody here believes we are perfect? Do we have problems? Thank you. Is Imam Nafis here? If Imam Nafis is not here, ask him, he's the Imam. Ask him, Imam, do we have problems in our community? Do we have family problems? Yes, yes. And, and the other uh, half of it is here too, Imam. There is a problem. Now for you as Musalleen Muqtadi, you don't do counseling, you don't see it. You deal with your own family, probably your colleagues talk about it. But to be an imam, and I mean imam like Imam Nafis and myself, who are serving communities, not only leading salat, but marrying people, helping people, saving families every day. And I know Imam Nafis does a lot of that work. May Allah bless him. And I'm talking about this kind of imams. I'm not talking about imams in the internet or just go conferences, give speeches. I'm talking about people who do the grassroots work, who know that there is a problem in the community. And what the Imams are saying, they're saying we're in big trouble. That the ship might be sinking. That there are too many holes to seal. And this is a fact. And I'm not trying here to scare you, but if we don't speak the truth and make yourself aware of this problem, then I am lying to you. I can talk about Sahaba Kiram and uh, uh, the beautiful stories. I can talk, trust me, this topic is more important than many stories of Islam. 
The problem with us, and I say it frankly, is we glorify the past. MashaAllah, Sahaba and the world and this, we always, when we asked about treatment of women or family in Islam, we always go, well, 1400 years ago. This is how we talk. We have the syndrome of the past. We are like the very old people when they retire. What do they talk about? Hey, back in the days, mashallah, life was so good. Back home was the best. And then the children say, why did you come here? If back, you keep telling us about back home, back home, back home. Why didn't you stay there? So we glorify the past. So our, the elders talk about the past. The children, the youth, are talking about the future. And nobody is talking about now. So they, you go to any gathering, elderly people talking about, MashaAllah, 40 years ago. Yeah, MashaAllah, there was Barakah. There was Haya. There was this. Oh, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu when non-Muslim ask us about Islam, we say, yes, Islam is good. 1400 years ago, Rasulullah Sallam did so and so. No, they say, we want to ask you about Islam now. No, 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 don't see what's in the media. Islam is beautiful, 1400 years ago. This is true or not? We have a problem of the past. And our children, they're, they're hopeful, they're optimistic, they're youth. They talk about tomorrow. You, me, you talk to a group of youth, what are you talking about? When I'm going to have money, I'm going to buy me my Lamborghini. The other one, no, I want a Bugatti. And the other one, no, I'm going to buy me this, I'm going to get me this, I'm going to get... They're talking about the future dreams. It's, it's part of the youth is to dream. But nobody is talking about now. The youth want to see role models. Every time tell them, you should be good Muslim. They say, like who? Like Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu Like who? Like Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu Like Uthman and Ali. May Allah be pleased with them. No, is there someone I can follow as a role model in this, in my reality? Yeah, yeah. Uh, who? Um, let me think about. Uh, uh, 200 years ago, there was a good guy. So the crisis of now and role models is not there. This is something. So we need to start speaking Islam of now. We can quote from the past. We can plan from the future. But Allah is asking us about now. I am not responsible for what? Ma fata wa ma sayakun. Allah will not ask me about what happened before and what will happen in the future is not in my hand. But Allah will ask me what I can do now. In the light of that, we look at this issue and see what is happening now. Right now, and I'm not going to talk about this, my khutbah yesterday in Brampton was about this problem of atheism. And I mentioned six reasons of atheism. If I give khutbah here a lecture, next time I'll talk about six reasons why some Muslim children. And you know Imam Nafis is here. I don't have to look at him. Imam Nafis, do you see families coming to you lately, especially in the last 10 years, with their daughter and son, and say, our son is asking us, questioning the Quran and Islam. I'm not looking at him. Yes or no, Imam? Do we have atheism now coming out? Ilhad, Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab believed in Allah. If you ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they will say Allah. They, Abu Jahl prayed to Allah. Abu Jahl made dua to Allah. But they made shirk, they added other deities. But they still believed in God. Today, atheism says there is no God. You guys are got it wrong. And our children, Muslim children, you will be surprised from practicing Muslim families, are poisoned, especially by internet, especially by this gate to Jahannam that we have now, internet, fitna. And now. In the internet, and you know the category that is in the most danger, and we talk about women today, young Muslim women. 
between the ages of 14 and 25. You saw in the news a young lady came from Saudi Arabia, the land of Mecca and Medina. That's only one story. When you go in the internet, there are thousands like that who want just to leave Islam. They ask one of them, why do you want to leave Islam? She said, I see my father praying, doing tahajjud, doing rosa, fasting, doing all of these things. But he beats my mother like she is a kutta, like a dog. And even you're not supposed to beat a dog. He, when he's home, he makes us see Jahannam. And publicly, he looks nice, haji, beautiful, everything. He prays Fajr. He, I don't want this Islam. And he tells them, Islam gives me the right to beat you, the hell out of you. This is very dangerous. That's one of the reasons of atheism is those who claim to practice Islam are making people hate Islam, including their own children. A lot of young professional women in this country are questioning Islam. How many of you them came to you and said, can I marry a non-Muslim? Why can't I marry a non-Muslim? At least a non-Muslim will not marry another wife and say, Allah allows me to do that. At least a non-Muslim, he knows if he beats me up, he's going to go to jail. He didn't say, Allah tells me I can do that. We are using the religion to destroy the religion and the people of the religion. That's why we need to educate ourselves. Now, Islam is beautiful. But are Muslims beautiful? Islam honors the family, honors women. I have no doubt in that. Yaqeen. The Quran and Islam have honored women, have protected families, have brought the dignity for every human being, has fought racism and discrimination and tribalism. But we still have that until today. These things predated Islam, but they are still existing. Islam is something, and what Muslims do is something else. That's why in the academia, and I don't want to make too, make too much academic, you know, when I heard it's a conference, I prepare like, an, like a lecture with facts, but in academia, in the West, they don't look at what the text says. They look at what people do. Social scientists and anthropologists, they observe the human behavior and societies. They don't, because science, many of you are scientists, science is based on observation and experience. Then they come to conclusions and make rules.